All right, that's great. Okay, good. So finally, uh, the uh, question and session. So I would want to take up uh, question and session at the end of uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, please post it in the question and answer uh, box. I would also try and interact with uh, with uh, all of you in between the uh, session, just to uh, make sure you guys are interacting and understanding what uh, we are doing over this. Now let's uh, begin with this uh, journey uh, today on this uh, cybersecurity as uh, as a practice, how it has uh, taken uh, uh, shape in the twenty first uh, century, right? Now. Uh, I I generally call this it's a jungle, right? So I don't know how many of you agree uh, with me on this uh, perspective, but my perspective is uh, cyberspace is a jungle, and we all are different species part of the cyberspace, right? So when we uh, are in the cyberspace and we have to coexist in this jungle and thrive, uh, at the same time we also need to make sure we have we have uh, some precautions in place. We make sure we protect ourselves. We, we make sure we protect the ecosystem. Eventually, protect the jungle, which is basically going to benefit all of us who are part of this ecosystem, right? So, bringing that uh, perspective in here, uh, calling this as a, a cyberspace, there are four questions that is uh, that you are seeing on your screen. Now, this question is for all of you. You do not uh, need to answer it or put it on a chat or a question box. Just take this question, answer it for yourself, and see how it relates to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, uh, when we talk about cyberspace, there are, there are uh, plenty of uh, stakeholders who are part of this. You might be a cybersecurity professional working for an enterprise protecting the uh, uh, the enterprise from cyber threat, right? So you might be a, a employee of a federal agency or a government organization uh, protecting your uh, assets in there. But end of the day, we all are individuals and we are cyber consumers. We consuming cyber in some way or the other. And I think all of us who are in this uh, webinar cannot deny for the fact that you are nowhere connected to the cyberspace. Otherwise, I wouldn't be seeing I wouldn't be seeing you here in this webinar. Agree, right? So we all are an integral part of this uh, cyberspace, and uh, from a cybersecurity perspective, I think it's the responsibility of all of us to uh, to contribute towards the, uh, the the security part of it, to bettering the uh, uh, the uh, security, and also to make sure we are being protected. Right, so read this uh, four uh, questions, uh, write it on a piece of paper and answer it for yourself, right? So how much time do you spend in the, uh, in the cyberspace every day? It might be for work related, it might be for some uh, professional connects, it could be some personal connect, it could be uh, as basic as, as ordering food online. Right, and that's I think something which we have been uh, uh, getting used to in the last one year in this pandemic. Right, so this spend that I'm talking about has increased enormously in the last one year. Right, the second question we talks about cyber hygiene. What are you doing as far as cyber hygiene is concerned? Now, I I I um, uh, I can uh, safely assume that we all understand what cyber hygiene that I'm talking about, right? We have a personal hygiene, we need to maintain a, an equally important cyber hygiene, right? We all are part of this, integral part of this. What are you uh, individually doing to maintain that cyber hygiene? If you are a security, a cyber security professional, you have an additional responsibility of maintaining cyber hygiene, not only just for yourself, but also for that enterprise that you're working for. So what are you doing in that space? And is cybersecurity a must have now? Or we are still in that dilemma that maybe I, I need cybersecurity, maybe I not, and I don't need it, right? So is it a must have, is it not? So think for a moment and, and just write down the answers. Like I said, you don't need to 
uh, put it on the chat or tell me on this uh, webinar. Take it back and just think about it for a, for a moment and see what it means to you. And most importantly, have you experienced a cyber attack? Again, this could be you personally as an individual or as an enterprise, as if you are a cybersecurity professional, I, were you part of any cyber, cyber attack uh, previously? And how did you react to that? What happened? Was the cyber attack successful? What was the consequence of the cyber attack? How was the cyber attack handled as, as an incident? Right. So these are some things that we need to uh, think about when we uh, talk about cyberspace. So I am going to uh, uh, leave these four questions to you to think about it after the uh, webinar also. Let's go on and uh, move on to the next uh, slide here, which actually brings us to the point, why is cybersecurity important? Now we know we related ourselves in the cyber space and we are seeing that there is a lot of uh, things that we are doing in cyberspace. So when we talk about importance of uh, cybersecurity, Right, so there are. I know this is a topic: importance of cybersecurity. Something which we can keep talking about, uh, or bringing in a lot of uh, points to uh, points of uh, discussion. But I have uh, managed to put in some points in there, which would probably uh, something which you can take it away from this particular session. Now, cyber attack will affect everyone. There is no one who can uh, probably escape from it, unless until he's made, maintaining a a cyber hygiene or looking at cyber security is a more of a must have uh, uh, practice, right? So when we say cyber attacks will, uh, will affect uh, everyone, it could be directly or indirectly, right? You could be uh, a direct victim to a cyber attack. Maybe somebody, uh, you, you by mistake clicked on a link which uh, was uh, hijacked, or you, uh, your credentials were stolen, you were robbed uh, from uh, your bank, or that could be uh, an incident where you have been uh, uh, part of this or you've been a victim to a cyber attack. Oh, I, yeah. There's some background noise. Okay, thank you. Yeah, all right, great. So, so uh, that that is something which you, do, uh, as an individual, uh, is uh, is part of it, or you become a victim to a, a cyber attack, right? So, or you are part of an enterprise. Now, the reason why I am uh, um, trying to talk about two different stakeholders are because. Enterprises and individuals, again, are the uh, critical stakeholders as part of uh, cyber security or the cyberspace, right? So we need to understand if I'm an individual, how will it impact me? If I'm an enterprise, how will it impact me? What is that I'm supposed to do? Right? So uh, that, that the, the point of uh, uh, the importance from an important perspective for the uh, cyber security, Either you are uh, directly affected or you indirectly some way or the other you get uh, the, uh, the impact of uh, the cyber uh, attack. If the cyber security's importance is not understood or the best practices are not followed or um, uh, uh, the, the hygiene is not maintained, that's an important uh, uh, point in there. And the second point that uh, brings us is the rapid changes in the technology. And we are all a witness to that fact that what you see today might not be the same tomorrow, right? And we have been seeing this in the last few years and the 21st century is something which uh, where technology has, uh, has grown very, very rapidly. It's, it's, I would, I sometimes say this, the uh, 21st century has, uh, has inherited something uh, from its uh, uh, previous uh, century, the 20th century that uh, is taking us in a different direction, right? So technology is something which uh, has played a very major role uh, it is playing a major role and it will be playing a major role uh, for, for all of us. So rapid changes in the technology also, also puts focus on how we need to focus on implementing cybersecurity, understanding cybersecurity and the importance that it brings in whenever there is a change in the technology. Right? It could be 
as simple as uh, a new uh, mobile operating system is launched. Let's say there is, a, there is another company who brings in another uh, mobile device with a new uh, operating system. It's neither Android nor an iOS or nor a Microsoft uh, Windows uh, kind of an operating system. It might be something or something, something different. Now, that change when people start, start uh, adopting or going with that particular uh, technology, there are a lot of things that needs to be, uh, that, that falls in place. And, and cybersecurity is something which also needs to be considered as an integral part of that, that flow, right? So, so rapid changes in technology becomes a very important uh, uh, point where cybersecurity is evolving. So this is again a uh, question I said that some people say that cybersecurity is still evolving. Uh, there is an argument or a different school of thought where people say, no, cybersecurity is kind of matured. We are, uh, uh, we are enhancing it or making it more sophisticated. Again, it, it's, it's, it's totally up to the person who's understanding and how uh, effectively he, uh, the enterprise or the individual is uh, 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 embracing that uh, cybersecurity within the ecosystem. The third point, which uh, also brings in or, or focuses the importance of cybersecurity is uh, the business impact. When, it, when there is a security breach, what is the impact that uh, the, the enterprise or an individual, right? So uh, when I say business impact, yes, we can say I'm leaning towards the enterprises, but uh, you can also kind of relate it to an impact to an individual, which, I want to bring it up in the next uh, point, the threats affecting an individual. So these two points, which, which basically talks about if there is a security breach, what is the impact that uh, the individual might have or what is the impact the, uh, the business or an enterprise uh, would have? So that puts a lot of focus into the uh, adopting or embracing uh, cybersecurity effectively, right? So, uh, I was reading this uh, somewhere where it says security or IT security, cyber security, something uh, which uh, has to be led by somebody, right? So if it's an enterprise, the leaders who really understand from the top uh, uh, management, it actually flows nicely within the enterprise, right? So more from a practice, policies perspective, processes, the technologies that they are adopting, and how are they continuously uh, monitoring and controlling those uh, technologies and systems. That uh, uh, puts a focus on how, uh, uh, why cybersecurity is uh, so important. And it's no more, uh, I would say, an option. It's a must have. It's, this is uh, my interpretation, my perspective. Uh, it's not because that I'm into this industry and I'm, uh, uh, I'm part of this fraternity and I've been here in this industry for, for, for uh, some time. But um, it's, it has become a very integral part of it because we all have been or are, are getting into or probably are, are very uh, uh, involved in this uh, cyberspace that cybersecurity makes it uh, an important uh, 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 part of it, right? So looking uh, from there and then moving uh, to a point and see how the uh, cybersecurity has evolved, what has been the changes uh, that we have experienced in the last uh, two decades, right? So in the uh, uh, last 20 years from when the 21st century started, uh, how did we adopt whatever was uh, coming up in the previous uh, century or uh, in, the early, uh, in the early 90s or in the uh, early 80s, what kind of technologies came in and how did we uh, bring it to the next century and how did it evolve, right? Like I said, what happened in the last uh, two decades has been very rapid, right? From a, from a technology perspective and the landscape, the, whether it is an enterprise landscape or a landscape for an individual has actually evolved and, uh, and has grown uh, rapidly. So the, the, the different ways that it has uh, changed uh, in the uh, uh, cybersecurity, the changing phases of uh, cybersecurity, the rapidly changing landscape, right? So it, when a technology changes or there is a, uh, an upgrade in the uh, technology or something new that gets added, it's an add-on when it, 
when it changes rapidly, like we see uh, the uh, operating systems upgrading, or we see technologies upgrading, maybe uh, every month or every two months or every quarter, that's a rapid change. How are we trying to adapt? Because the moment, the, the moment we get something new and we start getting used to it, we see there's something else, right? Now, the, the, whatever we have done in the last uh, uh, few days, a few months in trying to adopt to that new technology uh, is kind of, you can say, uh, goes obsolete or, uh, or create a period of time and goes obsolete really fast. And then comes a stage where we need to go and adopt the new technology again, right? So from an enterprise's perspective, yes, there is uh, there are there are a lot of challenges because when you get used to something and when you have those uh, technology implemented into the enterprise and you suddenly are being told that this is now obsolete, maybe. So from an enterprise perspective, we can say uh, maybe uh, in, 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 in uh, three years or in five years, uh, there, there are some changes that are happening. But I would still say that is a rapid change when you need to change uh, uh, or, uh, your landscape. Now, when there is a change in the landscape, we also have uh, threats looming in that landscape because if something new has come, we don't really know how this new thing has to uh, will be will behave or what kind of uh, consequences this new uh, uh, change that we are uh, embracing is going to bring into the existing landscape. Again, from a, a cybersecurity perspective, the landscape analysis, understanding what goes in, what goes out, and how does it fit in, all these things kind of uh, comes in here. Artificial intelligence. And we all know that this uh, artificial intelligence has uh, uh, pushed the cyberspace or the way technologies are moving to a, a different level. And cybersecurity is no exception. We all uh, agree to that, right? So. Uh, artificial intelligence-led tools that we are using uh, today to to uh, uh, to, uh, to either manage uh, security, to monitor security, to analyze the data. It could be the events, it could be the incidents. So a lot of things that goes into when we adopt an, uh, artificial intelligence, or uh, along with artificial intelligence, we say uh, the machine learning and artificial intelligence space tools that we need to adopt to, uh, to, to, to enhance the uh, security uh, landscape or enhance the way we are managing the security, right? So with that, with though uh, AI uh, adds a lot of value, AI uh, adds a lot of uh, uh, traction and also the, the speed in which we can identify uh, the events or incidents are much faster, but along with the uh, that uh, thought or along with that practice, it brings in its own set of uh, um, I wouldn't say drawbacks but challenges, which we need to adopt to. Right? Uh, uh, as an example, uh, when when a, when, a, when a, an enterprise is thinking of applying uh, artificial intelligence to cybersecurity, right? Why do they do? They ideally uh, do it to uh, solve some most uh, difficult or challenging problems, right? So what uh, challenges AI can bring in, though it is going to solve some challenges that we already have, or we're trying to uh, solve those challenges, but what will artificial intelligence as a, a technology or as a practice is going to bring to us is uh, one is the attack surface becomes very vast. Right? There are there are hundreds of attack vectors that we might uh, see, and most of all, most of all, that I uh, really emphasize on this is the shortfall of number of skilled security professionals. Now, the expectation now is, as a security professional, I need to uh, learn something additional from what I'm already doing and I'm already keeping uh, myself up to date with the technologies in my realm. Right, so I'm going out of my, uh, you can say, a comfort zone or a realm, and I need to go and adopt, or go and, go and uh, embrace a new thing that would uh, eventually uh, help my enterprise handle security in a better way. Right, so that is another major challenges where the enterprises are looking at. From a, 
uh, individual's perspective uh, also if you see artificial intelligence led tools uh, your, you 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 there are uh, i would say from an in, in individual's perspective there are more benefits that we can see from uh, the applications that we are uh, we are accessing and we are seeing applications the, uh, the the artificial intelligence has brought in a lot of benefit from a, an end user or an individual's perspective but it brings in its own set of uh, 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 the challenges also along with it right that's uh, one uh, um, major i would say uh, change in the face that was not so very prominent in the last century which has taken uh, the uh, the main stage or the center stage from a, a cyber space perspective so when this acts the cyber security also need to evolve along with what we are bringing into that cyber space similarly the internet of things or we we can call it as the internet of threats right so from, as a security professional <laughs> uh, when when something gets added to the cyber space it's uh, it becomes more of a uh, uh, i shouldn't be telling this but like a nightmare for a cyber security professional and i'm sure uh, for most of you uh, who are from the same fraternity will agree to me uh, silently and uh, i thank you it's our internet of threats a lot of devices uh, getting on connected uh, uh, um, and, and uh, communicating sharing data it could be any device from your home we also need convenience we also are looking at uh, devices which can talk to us digitally right so there is a need there is a, um, a need to fulfill that gap so there are people who are uh, making those need or fulfilling that demand but at the same time from a, a cyber space perspective you see there are a lot of other things that are getting added to right so again there is a change in the uh, the way we need to uh, uh, again the, the threat landscape or the cyber landscape that we are looking at now has grown enormous right with the internet of things uh, getting into it uh, internet of industrial uh, thing that is getting getting connected so more and more devices when it connects to the network the attack surface grows obviously there are more opportunities for the attacker to attack uh, attack us and then uh, uh, the 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 challenges for the security professional grows uh, over a period of time so that's where we see that uh, the shortage of uh, skilled professionals skilled uh, security professional uh, uh, is is becoming more critical day by Right? because when there are less number of people to manage or even to monitor and and work on these technologies we know what challenges what we're going to finally uh, end at uh, when we do that and uh, another uh, uh, change that we are seeing in the last uh, i would say maybe 5 to 7 years is um, uh, the identity is uh, has become a key right we all have identities uh, in the uh, cyber space whether it is your uh, a facebook uh, account or your uh, your twitter handle or it is any other uh, platform where you have your identity that has become uh, a key and that also is a key for the uh, the bad actors right or the attacker that we see so how is this identity uh, evolving why we need to uh, consider this uh, identity and uh, how do we handle it again there is something called zero trust that we have been talking about uh, of late uh, uh, to, to, to manage this identities more effectively right so when we uh, uh, say zero trust we say okay there are a lot of uh, identities that are uh, uh, requesting or are, are trying to connect to certain applications how do we handle that right so why do we need to bring in zero trust right so uh, the, the 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 zero trust uh, architecture has been uh, brought into the existence a lot of people are talking about how do we embrace zero trust what goes into zero trust is it a new technology i mean give me a break we've been talking about a lot of things now we just got uh, 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 onboarded with uh, internet of things and artificial intelligence and now you're saying zero trust so what is it so so a lot of uh, uh, buzz going around this uh, uh, 
this architecture, though it is not a new technology, it's a philosophy. Okay. So when we say uh, zero trust, we, we talk about uh, identities and how we manage identities and uh, the least privilege, which is, uh, you can say, uh, uh, the first cousin of zero trust, least privilege, again, is kind of a, an implementation that we do in the uh, enterprises. Right, so that's uh, some, some, something which uh, is putting in a lot of traction. And uh, though it, I can say it is helping the uh, security professionals uh, to uh, kind of um, uh, understand the landscape, understand the, uh, the cyber risk that we have or lower the cyber risk by implementing uh, zero trust trust. But again, it's uh, 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 an architecture that needs to be uh, embraced uh, uh, over a period of time. Right. So uh, the uh, where, when we uh, when we looked at the importance of uh, uh, cyber security and the way it has been uh, adopted and the way it is changing rapidly uh, over a period of time, and specifically in this particular twenty uh, first century, where a lot of things are going uh, digital. Uh, digital uh, um, uh, world or a digital realm, the cyber challenges we all know has also been, has been involved because whatever uh, uh, the uh, tools and techniques and processes are available, it's available for the uh, uh, the bad actors also, for the attackers also. So they can use it in the other way. If they're using it to protect, they can use it for a different purpose. So how are the uh, cyber challenges uh, evolving? What are the new cyber challenges that we have? How uh, is uh, an enterprise handling that cyber challenge? How is an individual handling it? Right. So this comparison—I didn't say comparison, but uh, the the understanding or the application at an enterprise level and an application individual level to understand is more important because, like I said at the very beginning, we are all part of the same uh, realm. So we need to uh, work and uh, understand and uh, work towards it together. So first thing that I want to bring in here as uh, evolving uh, cyber challenges, as a matter of fact, is the winner, or I would say the top on the list, COVID-19, uh, uh, right? So I think uh, no other uh, uh, cyber uh, attack or cyber challenge has uh, has uh, troubled or bothered us uh, more than uh, the corona, right? So we all agree to the fact. A lot of uh, things have changed. There has been almost a 360 degree changes for a lot of enterprises. The, one of the most important uh, thing that we can see is people started working from home. I mean, this is a work from home concept is not a new concept. We all know that. We have been doing this and I, can uh, think uh, uh, for myself when uh, when I used to work from home, maybe uh, some 15, 18 years back also. But that was in a very specific uh, case or requirement with me to work from home. I'm on. Uh, I was an. I'm an on-call engineer. I need to support during the weekends. Right, so we 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 know we have all uh, at least the people who are from the same fraternity can relate to what I'm saying. But this, this situation, this pandemic, I think has forced everyone to think, I, out of the, not out of the box, basically think totally different. You scrap all your uh, existing thought process and just think the, the way you need to think as per the situation. You have been forced to do a lot of things, which probably we would not have done in the next 10 years, right? So, a lot of changes that we have done from a, a cyberspace perspective, IT infrastructure perspective, for uh, for us to understand and embrace those uh, challenges or the technology that we are uh, talking about, I think we would have done it gradually. So this uh, adding this at number one makes it even more uh, important uh, for us. Uh, to understand this uh, cyber challenge that we have from uh, the pandemic perspective. Now, why I brought this in as a point number one, one we know we all have experienced it. We all have been affected because of it, right? So though it's not a cyber attack, but it's a kind of a challenge that we have, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, a 
challenging the cyberspace, right? It, which has changed the face of the uh, cyberspace uh, drastically. Now, we don't know if we are to expect anything similar in the future. How ready are we? How prepared are we? What are we doing to learn? What lessons have we learned from this? Right? That's the important takeaway from this. What have we learned as an enterprise? What have we learned? As an individual, what have we learned? Right? So the lessons that we have learned is going to give us uh, probably uh, a better understanding. So we are well prepared, even if we have something similar in the near future, at least we know we are ready. So we have a challenge. We need to know how are we going to fix that challenge from uh, all the stakeholders' perspective, right? which includes you, me, the entire uh, ecosystem. How are we handling that? Right? That's one of the uh, challenges that we are. B, Y, O, anything. The, I didn't specifically mention as B, Y, O, D, because nowadays you can bring anything to the enterprise. Right? So it could be, I uh, uh, was in a discussion uh, a couple of uh, months back with one of our uh, clients where they are thinking of saying that, why don't we ask our, uh, our employees to bring their own routers and switches? I mean, I like, okay, it's a good idea, but why, right? So why do we even think of doing that, right? So is it not okay for you to just restrict yourself to just say, okay, you bring your own mobile device, that's it. So when you say bring your own device, it is a little uh, wide in terms of saying, I can bring my own uh, iPad, I I can bring my own mobile device, I can bring my own laptop, I can bring even my desktop put it into my boot and I just uh, come and connect it into the network. Right, so that is one of the uh, challenges that people are moving towards uh, that saying, you bring your own anything and you connect it to the, uh, the network. So what happens when we do that? What happens even when we think of even allowing that? The reason of bringing this point is to uh, probably uh, uh, make people aware that this can be possible. People can think of doing this at some point in time, right? Right. So, so if 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 I am allowed to bring in a gaming console to my enterprise because my uh, enterprise doesn't uh, have an entertainment uh, section, but I am a, I am a gamer. I get uh, motivated if I play a game during. The, meetings. I have a meeting at 4 o'clock, I have a next meeting at 6 o'clock. Between the four, uh, 5 to 6, I want to play a game. So I break, I'm more prepared for that uh, meeting and more motivated for that. Will the enterprise allow it? No. So let me bring my own gaming console. All I need is just a connection to the uh, network. I'm just going to connect it to the Wi-Fi of the, the enterprise and just play a game. Looks very simple, but looks scary when you look at the other side. When What happens if that gaming console and what is that gaming console what operates on it what are the uh, the uh, vulnerabilities probably it can bring in when it fit connects to the uh, wi-fi what wi-fi should we allow the device to connect to now are you listening to me i mean you, you guys understand what kind of challenges that you're seeing here if that is going to be there right that's the uh, very uh, point that i want to make here when you say bring your own anything Right. So how uh, closed are we when we talk about BYOD policy? How many of the enterprises are really seriously uh, thought about uh, um, devising a BYOD policy? Right. So that's, that's the uh, point I'm dealing with. Ransomware. I could have placed ransomware on top on even before COVID-19, but I think the... Uh, uh, kind of challenges uh, COVID-19 and BYO, anything can bring in that uh, probably eventually lead to a ransomware, right? But yeah, so that is still on the list of challenges that we are uh, having and uh, the enterprises are uh, still uh, uh, trying to fight this challenge. I don't want to use the word struggle, being more to be good, uh, sound uh, very negative, but I'm saying we are still fighting to uh, uh, this uh, this particular uh, challenge for an individual also this could be uh, pretty uh, serious right now one uh, uh, point that I want to make here which probably 
uh, merges your B by uh, or anything and ransomware kind of uh, threat for an individual, right? Enterprises are aware they are doing a lot of things to uh, bring down this uh, uh, the ransomware and BYOD uh, control policies and all. But from an individual's perspective, right? How many of us uh, are um, consciously controlling your Wi-Fi at home? I mean, at least uh, the uh, my uh, fraternity brothers. I think you guys are might be doing uh, this because you might be connecting to your enterprise network and all. But uh, if there are uh, individuals who are not part of this uh, fraternity, how many how many of you have seriously thought about? Um, uh, probably putting control on your Wi-Fi router. Or if a guest comes in, how many of you have actually said, no, I cannot give you Wi-Fi, use your mobile internet, right? What is wrong in doing that? If, I, if a guest comes in and uh, I think uh, I, uh, and on a lighter note, I know always uh, say this, when you have a guest at home, uh, even before you ask them uh, for a drink, you ask, you ask them, and we need Wi-Fi, right? So that's how it is, right? That's how, how common uh, we are. That's how we are uh, part of it. But have you ever thought that the person that you're giving Wi-Fi access to, unknowingly, what kind of cyber threat or challenges he or she can bring to you? Because he's a guy, he or she is a guest. He might come in for a day or two and just goes away. Your Wi-Fi router, your Wi-Fi connection is still on you. Your devices are connecting. And specifically, when you're working from home, Think about think about that. I there is no right or wrong answers here. I'm just giving you something to think. I'm just giving you something that you can go back and say, what am I doing uh, to uh, to better the uh, or and uh, the, the cyber security practices at an individual level also. This will eventually be your thought process when you work for an enterprise because uh, it's it's very important, right? So when we talk about uh, uh, bettering our uh, cyber security strategies, one of the most important things that we talk about is awareness, right? Awareness about cyber space, awareness about cyber threats. Now, is this not a good idea to have people start from home and then bring it to the same thought process to the enterprise? I leave it for you to think about this and see how we want to do it. You might have a different thought. You can say, it's okay to give a Wi-Fi. I can always reset my Wi-Fi and bring another thing and do that. There are a lot of explanation that can come, there are a lot of uh, discussions and uh, we can do about it, but I have given my perspective. It's up to you how you want to perceive and uh, follow and put it into practice. Uh, this fourth uh, point that I'm uh, bringing here, which uh, is uh, an evolving uh, cyber challenge, or I would say it's already there, uh, deception. Now, deception, um, who should be uh, who should be uh, um, using this deception in, uh, effectively? The attacker, or the defender, or both, right? So because, like I said, there are there are things in the cyberspace which is available for both. An attacker can use it for his own benefit. A defender can defend the same using the same tools and techniques and processes to defend against them. So deception, if it is used by um, a defender in an enterprise or an individual, how do we do it? And, uh, and when we implement this deception, in, in, there are a lot of ways of uh, doing it. How do we do it? But the challenge here is, what if the bad actor or an attacker uses deception to attack? Right? It is scary. Right? So we need to understand that uh, from that perspective also, how do we manage handle deceptions, right? There are various uh, ways of uh, uh, doing it and uh, implementing it. Blockchain and cryptocurrency, I don't have to talk uh, a lot about this. We all uh, know the hus and buzz going around this blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency. People say it is illegal. There are different people who say, no, it is good. We need to implement it at, uh, in the... Uh, at the uh, uh, nation state level or at the uh, organization level and all these things. But uh, it's still a challenge from a cyberspace perspective. From, uh, as, a, as a security professional, if I have to uh, go see, look at 
uh, work with an enterprise who are mainly into cryptocurrency and blockchain or using that technology for their uh, customers or clients, how do I go about doing this? Understanding that. Is it mature enough for us to do, to consider that and do it? It's not mature enough, that's the problem. If it was mature, I think we would have had some uh, uh, policies and procedures and more importantly, regulations around it, right? Uh, different countries have different thought process of adopting it or embracing it. Then uh, we, when we talk about, uh, uh, when, we, when we go more into uh, detail about how we do it, the, the consideration about blockchain, the regulations, the cryptocurrency, the regulations, the law that goes around it. If, what if somebody uh, goes around and do, does something, are we able to track that person? Are we able to penalize that person is a very important thing. Right? That's again, his is a continuous challenge. I think this is going to be as a challenge for us for uh, some times, which again uh, is true for a, uh, an IoT uh, um, environment, right? Or an IoT uh, setup or devices that are getting connected day by day. A lot of uh, uh, IoT devices that are being developed, IoT devices that are being uh, uh, brought into the uh, network. So when new uh, devices get connected, challenges will be there. These are all ongoing challenges for. Uh, for, for an enterprise uh, or for an individual to, to, to be aware of. So we need to uh, at least go and understand what goes into this world. Uh, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, the articles that goes around uh, the IoT and how, what kind of devices are coming, how are they connecting the, to the network, what kind of data is being uh, shared with those devices or what data is that the IoT device pushing into the network. Right, that uh, that is an important uh, thing that we need to understand. Uh, artificial and, uh, intelligence and uh, machine learning, like I said, there are a lot of uh, 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 challenges that brings in, though it is an enabler in a way, but comes with a lot of challenges that we need to adopt and identify and see how we are going to uh, do that. Deep fakes. I think this is something which uh, has surfaced uh, recently, right? I think there are a lot of uh, deep fake uh, videos going around in the uh, in the social media platforms, right? What kind? What will these uh, deep fakes uh, um, technologies do, right? I don't want to uh, uh, dig the grave of my great grandfather and bring him to life, right? That's not. What am I going to do with that, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I don't want to do that. So let's live with what we have today. Why do I need to go back 100 years back, dig somebody's grave and bring it into life? What am I going to achieve with that? No, it's, I mean, if that is my perspective, right? So I'm not trying to uh, bring that perspective to, or uh, uh, enforcing that perspective, but I'm just bringing it to life that these are something which is coming in. Now, when something like this comes into the picture, into the cyberspace, my concern is that cyberspace. When it comes into cyberspace, how will it impact the people who are uh, already part of the cyberspace? What is the need for having this, right? So we need to go back and think about this challenge. And this is going to get worse, uh, believe me, this uh, because the deep fakes and other uh, technology that we are uh, introducing to, uh, to, to pull something back from history is something which is going to uh, get, get worse, I think, in the, uh, in the, time, in the time to come. So let's uh, let's uh, witness that when we when uh, it comes to us. But for now, we can uh, we go ahead and see how effectively are we embracing all these things. How effectively are we embracing the new technologies that are coming in? How effectively are we embracing cybersecurity as a as a practice? Though it's for if it's for an individual or for an enterprise, how are we trying to uh, do it? So very important point is to stay up to date. Now ask yourself uh, as a security professional or as an individual or as an enterprise or uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a person, what uh, efforts are you taking? Maybe it's, uh, it's just like, it's, it's maybe a, a daily routine. As part of your routine, you might uh, uh, stay up to date by uh, subscribing to certain uh, uh, news and updates where you get, up, uh, get yourself updated on the uh, 
on the cyber security, uh, uh, the, the industry news, what is happening in there, what is going on. You don't need to go and read, buy a newspaper uh, specifically or a magazine specifically for a cyber security to understand that. There, there are a lot of things that comes in the media, but not everything. But if you're particularly interested in getting uh, yourself up to date, you need to be up to date because like I said, the cyberspace uh, or uh, the uh, cyber security is something which changes rapidly. What you was there 10 years back is not there today. And we all understand that fact. So the, uh, uh, the point to uh, stay up to date is important. Threat intelligence, again, from an enterprise perspective, are you uh, engaging uh, into threat intelligence? Why is it important? As an enterprise, if you look at why is it important for you to acquire intelligence, right? Specifically from the cyber threat perspective. It is if you are, uh, uh, if you want to be prepared before something happens a pro, as a proactive measure, right? So a lot of traction is getting into the threat intelligence space. A lot of uh, uh, enterprises are coming into this uh, space where they uh, source uh, that uh, intelligence and uh, they acquire that knowledge on behalf of an enterprise, right? And from an individual's perspective, yes, this is uh, where this is also again relevant for you to be uh, uh, well prepared before any, if you become a victim, uh, if you are a potential victim of a, of a, of a cyber attack. Like say, for example, uh, uh, if, if you want to uh, be prepared before uh, any uh, phishing attack happens or any uh, ransomware, uh, phishing attack based ransomware happens to, uh, is, is running around the, the world and you do not want to be a victim of them. So up, staying up to date and acquiring certain intelligence. I know from an individual perspective, acquiring threat intelligence might be a costly affair. But whatever is possible, if you can do it to acquire that knowledge and stay up to date, it makes a lot of sense and they will give you how effectively you are embracing the uh, cyber security. Now the new normal, right? So we have started calling this uh, the new uh, normal, right? After the pandemic, the bright side and the dark side of the new normal. So we all know uh, the bright side that just to give you an example, uh, uh, um, the major workforce working from home, not going to the office, the travel time that has reduced for me probably is a, a bright side that I can think of. But from an enterprise perspective, I see the, the attack surface has, uh, has, uh, has grown, you know, obviously the vast attack surface, right? Now, the, 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 the users are connecting from home. There's a different network that they're connecting from. How am I going to handle that? What am I doing to look at uh, the challenges that it might pose? How am I going to embrace that? The new normal is something which we have to start embracing. I think most of us have agreed or have accepted that fact, yeah, this is going to be the new normal. We are not going back to what was normal uh, in uh, 20 or up to 2019, eight and sooner, or we might not even go to that, that age, right? So we have come past that. So we have to accept this is the new normal and go ahead. Zero trust architecture. I'm just putting a lot of emphasis on the uh, zero trust architecture because that is going to be the way forward for a lot of enterprises to embrace it readily. They yeah. have because this doesn't need any changes that you need to do in your existing infrastructure. You can overlay the zero trust architecture, understand how that can be uh, uh, implemented in your existing infrastructure, and do uh, do away with uh, the uh, the, the, the point of uh, a trust that you need to you blindly go with them, right? That's the point that we have when we get in the uh, zero trust and security architecture. And yes, yeah, so when we talk about a lot of things, I like I said, the regulations and laws and cyber insurance and all these things comes into the picture. Again, this space is also getting a lot of traction, specifically the uh, cyber insurance uh, uh, side of it. Right. So a lot of enterprises uh, investing into cyber insurance. Why? Because we know there are a lot of uh, uh, threats, attacks that are coming in and we could be a victim someday. Right. So the other day I was talking to a client, he said, no, we, we have not had any attack in the last three, three and a half years. I said, good for you. 
I said, good for you. But how long? Right? So how long? So what are you doing to, uh, uh, to, to continue that? It's good that you've not been a victim of a, a cyber attack in the last three, three and a half years. But how can you carry forward the same thing for the next 30, 35 years? What are you doing for that? So that, that's where the point, that's where it's uh, clicked the code. We might have to think about a different approach of uh, uh, getting into a security operation for monitoring. Right? As an example, I'm telling you. So cyber law and cyber insurance is something which uh, can act more of a risk transference, right? So law basically tells that this is what we are supposed to do that, but yeah, how effectively that is going to uh, be there in the cyberspace, we are uh, uh, yet to see. But insurance more is, a, is more of a hybrid insurance, we know it's more of a risk transference. We're just transferring the risk from us to the, the insurance company, but yes, eventually somebody has to pay for it. So that's what uh, uh, we have when we are trying to embrace it. There are a lot of other things that comes into and embrace it, but the important uh, focus points is what I have tried to bring in within uh, this uh, point. And, and the uh, important uh, stakeholders that we uh, that we all are part of. It. And we all need to play uh, an equally important role if we need to uh, see a, a wonderful cyberspace to, in the longer run, in the in the future, it goes along with us in the longer run and the generations to come, right? So businesses have to play their part of uh, making sure they have their own best uh, practices that they are that they are following as far as the uh, the, uh, the cyber security is concerned, data privacy, the privacy for uh, uh, main, uh, for managing critical uh, data, what uh, they are storing within themselves, how they are sharing it or what laws or policies they have around it. Consumers like us, individuals, uh, we also need to play our uh, role in terms of uh, making sure we understand what is going on in the cyberspace and, uh, and implementing our controls effectively. Like an example I gave you, Wi-Fi uh, for your guests is a very uh, um, basic uh, or a fundamental uh, thing that as a consumer I need to I need to uh, look at governments and law enforcement. Yes, nation states, they play, they have to play a very major role as for us maturing uh, the cyber security for uh, the uh, nation state is concerned, for the, for the country, for the nation, for the government, for the law enforcement, very important. Thing. And most importantly, cyber security professionals, um, my fraternity brothers, so uh, we all have a very uh, important role to play. We uh, are the cyber warriors, right? So let's keep fighting. Let's keep uh, uh, keep doing what we are doing the best, and uh, make sure that we make this cyberspace, uh, the ecosystem, or the cyber realm a wonderful uh, place in here. So as a best practices, these are something which uh, we need to uh, make sure uh, as an enterprise and as an individual, we go with it. Documenting and enforcing security policies has, is a must. Continuous awareness. We cannot just leave the awareness part uh, just like that. We have to make sure that it's continuous awareness uh, in the enterprise and an individual. You all, individuals also might need to go through some awareness programs to understand what is going on. Never trust, always verify is a policy that we need to uh, put in. For an enterprise, also for an individual. Uh, individual size, like, like the example I gave you for a wife, you might not trust everybody, you might or you want to verify and see, okay, this is the device that, get, that got connected previously and giving access to them. Just as a uh, fundamental example that I'm giving you. Passwordless authentication, right? For an enterprise and for the uh, individuals, uh, we we are moving towards uh, something like a pass because this will reduce the attack surface to an extent when we go passwordless, right? Maybe it's a, a an OTP or a or a magic link or a, a biometric kind of authentication that we eventually have. I think a lot of uh, 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 online uh, platforms are already uh, adopting uh, these uh, uh, password authentication where you don't need to remember a password. 
You put in your mobile phone and a number, and you get an OTP and you log in every time, right? So something like that. And uh, finally, the uh, cyber hygiene, which I did talk about it uh, uh, briefly in the beginning. So uh, how are you maintaining a hygiene from a cyber uh, space perspective, in the cyber space? What are you doing as an enterprise user, as an individual consumer? What are you doing to make sure uh, you are maintaining cyber hygiene? Because if you are doing it at one point, it will eventually cascade. Right? So you might probably you might uh, also want to use the same kind of uh, policies procedure to keep your cyber uh, hygienic in your enterprise also if you're an enterprise user. So uh, uh, make sure you have you follow certain uh, practices like your passwords. You keep uh, a strong password if you don't have a password of authentication. You keep changing your uh, passwords uh, sometime I mean regularly regular interval. You back up your uh, data, remove unused data that is there that you don't need. Uh, uh, make sure you clean up your emails and emails specifically with attachments. If you don't need it, you can scrap and delete it. Right? So these are some examples that I'm giving you which you can do as part of a cyber hygiene, which will eventually help you as an individual and most importantly, if you're an enterprise user, uh, it's uh, going to help you in there. Right? So with that, uh, I just uh, want to very briefly uh, tell who we are. We call ourselves the cybersecurity enablers. We drive IT technologies, right? So we are a cybersecurity firm based out of uh, Hyderabad, India. The reason why we call ourselves cybersecurity enablers is because we go in where we see a challenge, where we go in we see a cyber challenge with the uh, enterprise and come in as an enabler, come in as an extended team to help them with various cyber security uh, uh, challenges and we come in with the solution when we kind of understand and put in the relevant solution so we are system integrators into the cyber security space and also extend our uh, offering into the uh, uh, training uh, services also where we train uh, the uh, enterprise employees on some uh, vendor specific uh, um, training programs so we are a uh, a Compia authorized uh, delivery partner to deliver Compia courses. We are also uh, partnered uh, with uh, UNICEF, who is uh, the uh, um, one of the global uh, cybersecurity leaders. Uh, as their value added resellers, we are partnered with them to bring in uh, a, a zero trust uh, solution to the enterprises. And obviously, thanks to Consolidon for uh, having us. Uh, as their uh, network partner and giving us this uh, opportunity to bring in uh, this uh, topic to all of you. So with this, uh, I will uh, end here and open up for questions and answers. And I really thank you for, uh, thank you uh, to all of you for being uh, uh, part of this and uh, patiently listening to my uh, session here. And I hope it was uh, uh, helpful and you uh, are taking away something from this uh, session. Thank you very much. I will just uh, look at the question and answer session so, uh, for her. Uh, I think uh, we can go over the. Uh... Sure. Yeah. Um, so we have we don't have any questions, but does anyone have any questions or queries that you know for Dark or not? Yeah, you can either uh, unmute and speak, or uh, you can put it in the question and answer uh, box. Yeah. Can I? Yes. Yes. Please go for it. Yeah. Uh... You did mention that, uh, uh, you know, there should be a period where we don't have, it should be a password less uh, right. authentication. Right. Um, should it be a password less authentication only and uh, only use OTP for authentication? Would that be safe or should it be double layered like where we have a password and we get an OTP? So that could be a double uh, layered security. Yeah, so what, uh, thanks, uh, Wendy, good question. Uh, so, so when we talk about authentication, there are multiple factors that goes into uh, authentication. Uh, along, so generally as a best practice or as a recommendation, what we say is you at least have two factors that you can authenticate with. So when we say passwordless, the intention of uh, removing one factor, which has been the factor for quite some time, is remembering the password. 
you can eliminate that part, but add another factor to it. So for example, you can have a, an OTP that you get it on your phone. You can also have something like a biometric, right? So that makes it two factor. So that, uh, that can be two factor authentication that you can do. Yeah, that answers your uh, question. Uh, uh, biometric doesn't work at all times, so uh, yeah. So, so, so there, there, are, there are there are other factors also that uh, that uh, can be introduced. So, OTP is one of the factors I was talking about. So, it could be an OTP that you uh, get it on your phone. It could be a biometric. It could be some uh, kind of a token based uh, uh, authentication that you can do. Or even your uh, uh, you know, geographical location can also become an uh, factor. That means if you are in a particular location, you can authenticate to that uh, application that you're using. If you move out, you don't. You can do so. That there are certain factors that uh, can be uh, uh, introduced, or certain factors that can be combined together. But if you are if you are uh, uh, kind of okay with remembering password, yes. You can have password with an OTP or a password with a biometric or a password with uh, a token or something like that. That can also act like a multi factor. Thank you. Uh, additionally, there's a question from uh, Krishnan uh, on the chat box. Uh, just yeah, let me just look at that. Uh, in the chat box. All right. Yes, okay. yes, in the chat box. Yeah. What would be a Continuous investment for a company per annum with uh, USD 500 million turnover and that deploys around inspector spread across uh, 600. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's um, that's a question. That's a uh, question, uh, question that I cannot just answer uh, uh, on this uh, session. Maybe we will have to do an assessment to understand what kind of uh, landscape you have. Okay, so your landscape actually tells us what uh, uh, what you have already invested, what kind of uh, infrastructure that you already have, and looking at that, we can probably look at a, a continuous investment. So maybe we can uh, engage in a consulting uh, uh, arrangement where we can probably tell you how that is going to work and give you a, a number if that's okay with you. <laughs> Thanks. And one more follow-up question is, you know, with companies continuously moving to the cloud, how do you think, um, you know, the same kind of security strategies would hold good? Or do you think that it will it'll continuously keep evolving, especially given the cloud environment? Yes. So digital transformation and moving to the cloud already uh, obviously is a, is a different direction the enterprise is taking. So when a landscape changes, because you're going from an on-prem, which had a different uh, landscape and a different way of managing and monitoring it, and you're going to a cloud, which basically is on a, uh, literally on a third party uh, network or an infrastructure, so has a different uh, strategy that we need to think about. Sure, thanks. Um, uh, yeah, there's another, another question, how to become a cybersecurity specialist by self-studying? Uh, uh, Keshant uh, Kumar, yeah. Um, yes, you yeah. <laughs> see that the kind of uh, um, uh, the, uh, the professions and the, uh, the skills that the enterprises are uh, looking at currently, I think self-studying uh, you can do uh, to a certain extent. You would obviously need to interact with somebody uh, like us, uh, where we can tell you what uh, uh, skills are going around, what kind of skills you need to acquire, uh, more from a, a coaching and a mentoring perspective, and then we can train you on that particular uh, skills. So self-studying, yes, to a certain extent it can take you, but eventually you need to get associated with some uh, uh, training partners who can help you or enable the skills that you need. I think uh, that answers his question. Um, do we have uh, any more questions or queries for Dwarkanath? Uh, uh, there's one more question. Do soft skills and SA become a good in cybersecurity? See, uh, soft skills and cybersecurity skills are two different uh, things, obviously, yes. 
when you uh, need to interact with your stakeholders, when you are a cybersecurity professional in the enterprise and you need to interact with them, you obviously need to have that skill to articulate it correctly because when you uh, uh, tell something from a cybersecurity perspective that, uh, uh, for example, you need, to, uh, you need to tell them there is a security control that needs to be put in. If you do not articulate it correctly, maybe you, you put in a different security control in place. It's, <laughs> that's what I see. So it is important, yes.